guys are good. Woo. Thank you, thank you. Well, if he were to get his way, it would be a trifecta of youth in the leadership position in this country politically. Jagmeet Singh is about to get his chance to prove there's some substance to go with that self tailored suit and stylish orange turban. The Singh said a lot of nice things at the launch of his NDP leadership campaign, and he got a lot of nice press even before he took the stage. What was missing for some were the details that his five opponents will demand at today's debate in Sudbury, Ontario. How will Singh deal with the heat that the spotlight brings at the federal level, and can Pat Stogren establish himself as a contender in his first debate. We're back with round three of the Sunday Scrum. Susan Riley, John Ibbotson, and Denise CLA. Denise joining me from Ottawa. What is Jagmeet Singh's objective tonight, in your opinion, Denise? The, the first thing I want to say is, wow, what a jolt of electricity to the NDP leadership race to have Jagmeet Singh uh, put his name forward. Now, in terms of what he needs to do today, of course, flesh out, put more meat on uh, his policy positions. I suppose they don't exist quite yet, but it's very, very early. He's only been in the race for about uh, five weeks. They've got the entire summer, uh, a number of other debates, and right now he is giving the NDP exactly what they need, this additional media attention. There's an excitement there that I'm talking to uh, NDP folks who are saying, wow, okay, now we're getting to the race. Uh, however, with that said, there are Six, four, five others in the race. Uh, Peter Julian, you've got Guy Caron uh, and uh, Nikki Ashton and others who, you know, are, are not going to let the glitz and the glamour of uh, Jagmeet Singh uh, simply take over the narrative. And for sure, they'll, they'll be asking him in the debate this afternoon, you know, be very specific about your policy positions. But well, we, we, exciting all around. We saw, Looking the, forward to we seeing saw it. the benefit. We saw the benefit of a long campaign in the conservative leadership race, didn't we? Where, where uh, there was a lot of airing of some of the bigger flashes in the pan or the bigger ideas that were dominating the narrative at the time. I still think that, you know, just drawing back the lens a bit, um, the, and maybe politics has always been like this. Maybe it's because I'm in Toronto. But it seems increasingly like a niche interest, somewhere down the dial between, you know, stock car racing and the aquarium wallpaper. You know, it's... It, it's huh. just not something that I don't think most people outside of outside on the streets around here uh, pay a whole lot of attention to. And I think that's true. I think this morning a lot of people will wake up scratching their heads saying, who the heck is Andrew Scheer? You know, never heard of the guy. Um, I think so that be, in that context, um, anybody who does have media smarts and media appeal uh, is probably a good thing just to draw attention to the entire race. In that case, Jagmeet Singh may be the guy to do it. Personally, I know virtually nothing about him um, beyond his CV, and uh, I remain to be, I wait to be impressed. So John, so, you've been impressed. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Uh, I think Susan makes a good point, but the whole point of, of this NDP leadership race is uh, for the candidates to appeal to the tiny little universe that consists of Party Faithful and the Ottawa bubble. And Mr. Singh, in the debate this afternoon, will be introducing himself, really, uh, to both communities. Um, look, the little that we've seen of him suggests that this is something that NDP has never seen before. A visible minority candidate, a uh, candidate from the 905, um, who espouses uh, social democratic principles, who has a solid CV um, as a lawyer defending the, uh, the underprivileged, uh, but who also is just way, way cool. That said, <laughs> I was talking to a candidate who lost in the 905 outside Toronto um, in, in 2015 during the Tory convention, and I said, are you running in 2019? And he said, well, that depends on what happens uh, at the Tory convention. And I said, no, you should be worried, more worried about what happens at the NDP convention uh, in the fall, because Mr. Singh could raise the NDP numbers in Quebec or in the 905, um, and uh, split the progressive vote and bring Tories back into those suburban, ex-urban Toronto ridings. By the way, though, much less favorably, and I hate to say this, but I think it has to be confronted even this early, Mr. Singh and that turban may not go down so well in parts of Quebec, where the NDP currently has seats. So we can actually help the Conservatives in two ways. You can help the Conservatives by bringing the NDP numbers down in Quebec and by bringing the NDP numbers up in 905. But that is a lot of prognosticating down the road. Mm. Denise? Yeah, yes, indeed. And way too cool doesn't win 
elections. And of course, he, he has to, number one, get through this NDP leadership race with, a, a, at this point, at least a fairly strong uh, field. They have until July 3rd uh, for leadership candidates to announce. I can't think of anyone who's out there right now uh, who would have been a contender that hasn't announced already. So I think it's safe to say that this is pretty much our NDP leadership um, uh, field going into their vote in September. So he's got to get through that first. Okay. And uh, let us let us not discount, you know, longtime parliamentarians uh, from from the West uh, who are fully bilingual, folks like Peter Julian, Nikki Ashton, who is young, dynamic, a woman from uh, northern uh, northern Manitoba. So there are so many other uh, uh, candidates in this race. Mm -hmm. Jagme just happens to have the headlines uh, for this mm -hmm. week. Let's see what happens uh, in, in, in the following but weeks. Just because you have, I mean, women in the race, we learned from the conservative leadership, women did not do well in that race at all. Yeah, and, 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 and I think uh, Lisa Raitt, um, I, I, I thought I saw a quote from her saying that if more women had uh, voted and, and bought memberships, she would have, quote, wiped the floor mm -hmm. with the other candidates. Uh, but I think all parties are evolving when you look at the percentage of, of women that, you know, put their names forward, not just in, you know, a, a regular elections, but in leadership races. So, again, conservatives, two women, uh, the NDP so far won, uh, with the liberals at the time when they were running I think there was one or two women so I think it's it's just standard that uh, you know although, the more <clears throat> although just a postscript to the conservative race Ronna Ambrose you know made a specific point of promoting women when she was the, the interim leader uh, at that convention this weekend we had Candace Bergen who's you know a Manitoba MP and also interestingly Caroline Mulroney one of the Mulroney kids who for the first time that I can I think for the first time ever uh, actually expressed interest in a political career in the future um, which I thought was very interesting uh, that 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 kind of thing emerges but it may be more a question of, of, of new and more militant uh, blood versus old establishment I, blood. Yeah, I mean, if I you, if you look right. at people like uh, you know Charlie Angus and Peter Julian, these are the the loyal, faithful establishment members of the NDP. Uh, but you look at Nikki Ashton; um, she's young and she's way over on the left. She's over on the the Naomi Klein, Don't Abby say Lewis. Don't to the left because uh, she got into trouble for oh, that. Yeah, well, I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, the the Naomi Klein uh, sort of leap manifesto side of the party, mm -hmm. which would make it quite militant indeed. And then you've got Jagmeet Singh, also a visible minority, but from a very different universe, from uh, from the visible minority populations in suburban Toronto, who are reflected as well in suburban um, Vancouver, who's offering a, a completely new and outsider's uh, take on the party. You, you know what? It's actually going to be um, a pretty interesting race. All right. Well, we'll leave it on that note. And we'll see how that debate shakes down today. That's all the time we have for this week. Thank you so much, freelance columnist Susan Riley and John Ibbotson of the Globe and Mail. How crazy is it that we have not met in person until this morning? I know. <laughs> and it's so so nice to meet you Thanks. in person. And We're having the office picnic right after this. <laughs> <laughs> to join in maybe the View from America panel. Denise CLA of SEM Group Public Affairs, I look forward to meeting you in person one day as well. So yes, thank indeed. you for joining us and holding the fort down in Ottawa. At any time, if you want to join the conversation, tweet me at Carol McNeil. Remember to use the hashtag Sunday Scrum. And remember, you can catch up with the Sunday Scrum online. Head to cbcnews.ca. Find the politics page. You're watching CBC News Network.